Great, thank you. Um, we are running a little short on time. We've got a couple more minutes for us to have. I think I'm going to uh, kind of go into uh, some insight that you guys would like to leave to our panel, to our audience and then give uh, the remaining balance of the hour to our audience to ask any questions. But uh, fundamentally, we're, we're, you know, based on everything, I think uh, I was informed that my other half of my initial uh, statement was, you guys couldn't hear me, but to kind of finish it off, um, you know, we have a presidential election whose uh, results are either way or will likely not be accepted by half of the population. Which, could, which will lead to further uncertainty in the political markets. And with all the things that we're dealing with today in the marketplace, uh, the stock market's only 10% down from all-time highs. So uh, this environment comes with a lack of, clar lack, of, lack of clarity and uncertainty in the marketplace, and investors rely on your, your opinions. So, I mean, if you guys can share a little bit about what you would want to offer to our audience and to investors, um, as you know, words of wisdom for what's to come, and and we would appreciate you know any additional tips. <laughs> uh, I guess I'll start. I think our industry has increased responsibility mm -hmm. right now. It, it is about people at the end of the day, and we have sort mm -hmm. of been exempt from being required to have brands and missions and a lot of things to consumers, renters, the people who use the real estate. And I think real estate owners that stand up and come up with something interesting and has true meaning for people in residence will have probably higher rents, higher retentions, uh, you know, lower um, just uh, concessions because people are being extra judicious with their spending right now and they they want to feel good about where they put their money and know that it's more than just a roof over my head my building or whoever this entity is stands for my values i think we're being trained in ways we don't even realize digital service is not going away i used to love going to the grocery store i've been in the grocery store since march 1st i get it delivered every week these things aren't changing and these are opportunities for real estate owners to, without actually increasing payroll, increase the level of service through technology. So that's really exciting. All of the different things we can offer versus what we were even able to do five years ago. And the fact that the renter pool of all ages has been trained, right? And then this whole work from home thing, um, you know, it might not be here to stay for everyone, but certainly more people will work from home than they did February 1st going forward. And so we need to think about how do we design our buildings and our spaces that allow people to do that because units that make it real difficult to do, to, to have exactly what we're doing right now, a, a peaceful place to concentrate and have a conversation are going to be less popular than units that offer that flexibility. Lori, what do you think? Yes, I, I agree with you. And it's interesting because I was just on the phone with a developer the other day and they were talking about um, how they were going to design a new apartment building uh, in light of the fact that they think a lot of people are going to appreciate a unit to be designed differently so that they can have a, a home office, um, which uh, they think is going to be more you know, important. And I said to them, well, the, the, the larger you make the unit, the, the, the less affordable it becomes because it takes up more square footage. And they said that their thought was not necessarily making the unit bigger, just cutting it up differently so that it's almost the same square footage, but it just um, has a, I, I think what they were trying to design is a, an office component embedded within what a, a, a square footage that they would have offered before. So it will be interesting to see how, how that pans out um, and, and what percentage of the workforce does not actually, you know, go back to, to a traditional office space. Um, although CB released a, um, a video on what their take was with office, and they think that actually there, that um, office buildings um, over the past few decades, the pressure has always been to cram more people into less square footage. So per employee, the amount of space that you have um, 
is very, it's uh, the density is quite high. And so they think that in light of the pandemic, that now when employers think about space, um, they will think the other way in terms of how can I make sure that my employees have some social distancing, even in normal times. So now we might, we might not, so the, the upshot was we may not lose as much office space as one might think, because we may rethink the space that we do have and need more space for the same amount of people that we had before. But if all those people don't come, let's say 20% don't need to be in the office all the time, maybe we end up with uh, netting out, keeping the same amount of space because now they can just spread 80 people out over 100% of the area instead of, um, and, and not having 20% come back to the workspace. They also thought for mentoring purposes, we, we talked about that earlier. Um, and when you wanna retain talent, um, I think people expect to come to an office, have an interview, and they want to check out what the office looks like. So I think that, that aspect of it too, and for collaboration, um, you know, what's the lunchroom look like? I mean, people are still social animals. And I, think, um, and I think there is still a need for them to be able to feel like they can go in and be a part of, of, uh, of a group um, when, when it's appropriate. Maybe it's not every day of the week, but I still think we're gonna to need to have that, that, that office environment from that perspective. But switching gears to multifamily, um, I, uh, I, what I have heard is that although we, we expect from CV's research that rents potentially will dip as far as 8% lower by um, fourth quarter of this year, uh, CV is projecting that by first quarter of 2022, that we'll be back to the rents of where we were on say February 1st of 2020. So they think it may take us two years to get back to where we were before the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, I've also heard from people, they're concerned that um, some people may lose their homes to foreclosure because they've lost their jobs. And they think that may bring more demand to apartments. So something. Very great input. John, do you want to share anything? Uh, just quickly, I think um, Alex had uh, shared uh, that LA City planning, uh, uh, obviously, initially with the stay at home orders, uh, had to kind of figure out how to get these cases moving forward, but they are now uh, holding those public hearings um, over something like Zoom or Skype. So cases are moving forward. So, you know, uh, again, for anybody out there, uh, that's wanting to kind of uh, look at brickwork to use as a prospecting tool. The, the, on the planning side, cases are moving forward normally. So if there are developers like Steven out there that are looking at sites specifically and they, uh, they want to get them entitled, it's not um, um, stalled at all. It, it, it slowed down for obviously a little bit, but now they're uh, up to speed. So that's why I wanted to share. I think I'll, I'll say a couple things uh, that the planning department is under tremendous stress. It was before it was under resource, um, having worked for the redevelopment agency in the past, that great smart people work there. But I think we're going to see some regulation changes. Cities live off, um, you know, property taxes go to the counties and the counties are the biggest sort of tax collection money engines and cities live off transit, um, hotel taxes and retail sales taxes. And both of those are, definitely impacted. And then we were pretty specific on this Euclidean, you know, single use zoning through a lot of LA and essentially everyone's apartment and home is now a mixed use project, given that you're working and living from home. So what does that do? Does that open up the meaning of live work a little more? I think maybe regulations got a little too specific or on the nose and we might see some more flexibility from a regulation side to help aid the economy to move forward and get people building again and helping our industry, which it always lags consumer demand, be able to address that changing consumer demand a little quicker.